Hey Tool Talk fans, and uh, if you're new to this uh, channel, subscribe and click like. Uh, I've got this video for you guys, and this is the first iteration of the Dana 44 front axle swap uh, to an ARB 488 and uh, gears, um, gears and all of that that goes along with it, including drilling the housing. Uh, stay tuned for this. The housing is actually just like a Dana 44 Rubicon, and I'll show you why. Uh, there's also um, a lot to the disassembly. So this whole video is going to be just disassembly. This is how you get all the parts and guts out of your uh, Dana 44 front axle. And uh, Dana 30 is very similar as well on the Jeep uh, Wrangler. But this is for a Sport JL uh, JT uh, non-Rubicon uh, Dana 44. Okay, and before I pull this, 
it already has arrows right here and on the other side right here Let's see if I can get that in the camera so here and here and when I take these bearing caps off I need to make sure that they're on the outside and that if this is flipped and on the other side is the wrong way I need to make sure that they're not crossed because when this axle set up they put the caps on and then machine that area so that this is perfectly set up on both sides of the caps the caps have to go on the same way so I pulled the caps and uh, I just took them off in order and set them on my my uh, prep surface and uh, you can see here that the left bearing is the bearing that uh, contains most of the load so um, when you're watching Dana Spicer do gears they actually told us that this larger bearing is more taking more of the load than this side so they were able to put a larger bearing here get more strength out of the the front diff which we have uh, I have Dana 44's front and rear in the the uh, JT pickup and then the smaller bearing over here is kinda nice because then you can't really mess it up you know which side the shims are going on in the shim pack alright it is pretty late here but I uh, in order to pull the diff you have to remove the disconnect so the plate has four bolts, the uh, skid plate for this, and then they're 10 millimeter, and then this is 13 millimeter. I've already pulled the other axle shafts. This is just one last thing you have to do. And it's actually very easy. Everything on this Jeep has so far has been very easy if you have the right tools. All right, so I don't think I can show you guys how to do this, but um, before you pull the diff, you have to pull this intermediate shaft, which is the one that goes from here over here. So in your disconnect, you're just going to slide this out, and there is a there is a area machined into the shaft where that this part has that ring that I just showed you slides on here and it sits against this so in there I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers or a couple of screwdrivers and push this away from myself and then pop that pop this retainer um, off there so it's gonna take me a minute let me see if I can do this without holding the camera Catch yourself a good set of pliers that came right out. Wow, I've watched people struggle with that for a bit, and in the past myself, uh, you know, retaining C clips inside the diff have always been kind of a pain. I got this new pair of pliers, uh, and it's they're the Vice Grip Irwin brand uh, adjustable pliers, and they have a. I looked for a really tight head on these pliers, and they are just my word. These things. They do the job. So I'm just going to slide this down for a bit, just until I can see the other end of it. And there's the splines. I'm just going to leave it sit like that. And you guys can see the splines here. That's the, that's the one that was in the diff. Those are 32 spline shafts in a Jeep Sport. This is not a Rubicon, and we have Dana 44s just as beefy as the Rubicon, just without the lockers. So that is why I have my diff apart, because we're going to put some ARBs in. All right, so we have the intermediate shaft out, and everything should be ready to pull out now. Yeah, that came out pretty easily. And didn't want to do that, but that's all there is to that.
All right, so I've got um, a one and a quarter inch um, vanadium uh, socket here, and it fits the the axle. And so while I'm while I've got it here, and I'm turning it, I went ahead and put a half inch to three eighths from three eighths to quarter inch, so I could throw my uh, I've got my uh, inch pounds torque wrench on here and I just want to check the inch pounds from factory to see where uh, how much it takes to move this this pinion just to see where they have it set up so it's deflecting about it's there's no oil in it obviously because I dumped all the oil out of it but it looks like it's deflecting about 30 inch pounds if this makes no sense to you, then I'll explain it a little better. Um, what I've got here is as I push it to turn it, it's going, going, going. There's 30. So as it starts, you can see it start moving. I'm right around 30 to 30, 35 uh, to move it. So it's on the snugger, it's on the more tight side because there's a crush collar in here and I'm going to have to replace that. And so this is actually crushed on probably a little bit uh, on the tighter side, but it also is okay because once it gets lubrication, it will allow um, allow me to uh, move this a little freer. So you have to have a good feel for when you set your gears up. There's no movement in here. And uh, I just want to take them a minute to share with you guys that before we take it apart, how it should look. Um, because after we put it back together, this is how we should have it. Should be just about. You can get a feel after a while of what this should feel like, and this is, um, you know, without oil in the diff, it has a pretty good free, freedom of movement. Uh, per the for the inch pounds of torque, we're getting around 30. So it's a little on the tighter side, but I I kind of like that because uh, over the years it will probably start to have a little more slop in it. But that's all there is to that. Next thing uh, we're going to do is take this off. All right, I used the inch and a quarter to check the inch pounds, but I did find that I, I have a 32 millimeter uh, impact, and it's uh, it's chrome vanadium, which is similar to chromoly. It's just a little bit more brittle metal, and these are a little bit less uh, less expensive. They're about ten dollars a piece. So I've got 32, 35, 36 millimeter, all the big axle sockets, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, impact this here and we're going to pull this uh, pinion out. All right, so life is going to be a lot easier if you have impact tools, um, but I just used a gear puller just pull that off the pinion. The pinion's just now going to come out the front now.
I uh, wanted to wrap this section of the video up. Um, it's pouring the rain down, making uh, dinner for the kids on the grill, and um, running into a bunch of stuff today to try to get you out another video. Um, this one's going to be strictly, I'm going to end it here. This is going to be the disassembly of the uh, front axle. The next phase will be the uh, pinion comparison, the gear install on the ARB, the ARB locker, um, threaded housing. Uh, hole that you have to drill and tap. All of that stuff's going to be on the next video. Uh, these videos are going very long and I didn't want to leave any detail out. So this one's going to be strictly on how to disassemble a Dana 44 Rubicon and or your Sport uh, JT axle, the front JL axle. And uh, you'll see that there's an incredible amount of similarities to the housing itself on uh, a Rubicon versus Sport. So the JT is coming with uh, solid, uh, you know, big axles already, and all I'm doing is adding ARB air lockers, some chromoly shafts, and 488 gears. I'm turning my Jeep into a Rubicon-esque uh, truck, but it'll, you know, I'm going for stronger right off the bat. So um, stay tuned, click like and subscribe. Hopefully, this can get you kind of um, some content up until the point you're going to start really installing the ARB, the the real gear install, um, but there's just so much work to tearing apart an axle. I wanted to make sure you guys understood that this is uh, maybe not even a weekend job. I've had to do this after work a couple of times in between grilling out for the kids, uh, living the island life, and um, you know just living life. So uh, it's all done in my driveway. I did not get a shop opened up in time with COVID, so um, I feel like this video is already going long. So. Just uh, if you guys would follow me, click like and subscribe. I've got a next iteration of videos coming out that will be the very first ARB install in the front of a Sport Rubicon, or non-Rubicon, Sport JT Dana 44. So uh, it's coming, guys. We're there, and uh, I'm just making sure that I got all the parts I need to uh, do it right. And so living on Guam, there's like a one or two week lead time for parts. So that's where we're at. All right, guys, thanks.